for me about uh, Franz Liszt and um, some of the controversy uh, about his work by other more contemporary artists? Well, Franz Liszt was the first rock star. And what he did is he was a virtuoso pianist, and he put his hardest technique, the hardest passage he ever wrote, at the end of his most famous piece, the Hungarian Rhapsody. That a lot of people know it as the piece from the Tom and Jerry cartoon. Mm -hmm. And I recorded it in the 1990s on Virgin Records. And what happened in the 1990s was every recording artist that recorded the piece before me was faking. They were scamming the public. Not one of them developed their brains the way Liszt did. The problem with the virtuosos is that they didn't improvise. They, they did not think the way Liszt did. They were not able to play his hardest passage. So let me just give you a, so most of the recording artists of the 20th century, what they were doing is they were, they were Liszt wrote 19 times with his hands going in opposite directions like this. And what happens is they get halfway through, they just fall apart and they miss all the notes. They tend to miss 30, 40, 50 notes in a row in a concert. So what they did is they, they faked it. They put their hands together. There's, they, they eliminated all the opposite direction hand movements. Mm. And they still missed tons of notes on their studio recordings. So what you basically have is the biggest, all the performers that play at Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, they're playing the Hungarian Rhapsody, but they're not playing the ending the way Liszt wrote it. They had changed it into a children's version, and they still can't play. No matter how many chances they get, they still have tons of mistakes on their studio recordings. There are a few elite pianists who mm. didn't have to fake it with their hands together, like take Rachmaninoff. He used another scam. What Rachmaninoff did is he played it quietly. Now understand, this is the ending of the most exciting piece ever written for the piano. Liszt says, hammer it out at full volume. And Rachmaninoff is playing, but because when you play it very quietly, you don't have to move your hands as far. You're very careful, and you, it's not as dangerous. You won't miss as many notes. It makes it easier, but it's not exciting. Rachmaninoff and Hoffman did that on their studio recordings, and they still miss notes. Hoffman missed a lot more notes than Rachmaninoff. Now, Rachmaninoff always said that Horowitz was a better pianist than him. Well, Horowitz, his solution to the unplayable passage was to chop it in half. He made an arrangement where he took the level of difficulty on, on the end and he reduced it, but he took the level of difficulty on the easier passages and made them harder, kind of hot-dogging the easy parts, but simplifying the hard part. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's what we have. I mean, we have an entire century of recordings. And I'm not the only recording artist that played it in the studio. The way List wrote it, with all the right notes hammered out as directed. There is a Russian pianist named Dennis Metzler. He also did it. But what's, there, then there's a Canadian who's very good on a minor label, a guy named Mark Hamlin. He's using the same kind of scam as Rachmaninoff, only he brings the volume up to a respectable level. In other words, he doesn't hammer it at full volume, but he, 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 he's clinging to the keys and making it a little easier. But it's, it's probably the least of the simplified versions, the least fake. And, uh, but, but the thing is that Wang Lang is stealing all the thunder from, I'm the American, Dennis is the Russian. We both recorded for major labels. We could both play it. We're the first two pianists who actually played the most famous piece written for the instrument. And Lang Lang is, is just using an old scam from the past. Now, he simplifies other pieces. I saw him on Good Morning America. I call him the B team from China because he took the list piece with the second hardest technique. It's a piece called La Campanella. And it has technique in it that's way above his pay grade. So there's another version of that that they don't tell you about. A version by a pianist named Busoni where he basically diluted all the technique, made it easier for pianists. It's like a children's version. Now there's another Chinese pianist in Yundi Li who plays the real La Campanella. So I mean here what you have is is record labels throughout the 20th century. They were using, pushing fake narratives on all these various artists, from Horowitz down to my teacher, Ivan Davis. Uh, Ivan Davis was a student of Horowitz, and I studied with him. And one of the first things Ivan Davis said to me, he was a recording artist on London Records, he said, I, he told me all the scams about how everyone fakes lists and how no one can actually play it, how this is how they, this is one fake, this is fake, this, all the different methods. And I said, what happens? 
when the public finds out that none of you guys can actually do what you're purporting to do? And he said, they'll never know. I'll leave you with that. <laughs>